A key part of doing an analysis with concrete bending is setting up the perimeter or boundary of the slab or wall you're modeling. To do that, we want to look at the boundary and support ribbon in concrete bending. And if you notice at the very beginning here, we have the ability to draw an arbitrary boundary, a circular boundary, a rectangular boundary, or a polygonal boundary. Let's start off and look at drawing a rectangular boundary. If I select that, my mouse then allows me to drag a rectangular shape onto the drawing grid, and that's what I've done. And as you see, we've created a rectangular boundary. A couple comments to make about boundaries that are like rectangles, circles, or polygons, and that, that is they behave as a unit. In other words, if I move any of the vertices, which are the green circular corners of the boundary, the whole boundary will move with it, as you see. And I'm dragging a column line here, and the whole body is moving. Furthermore, if I select the boundary and then look over in our inspector under the Modify tab, we have properties which include the height and width of the rectangle, which I can change at any time. I can also change the boundary and have it rotated. So if I want to rotate this rectangle, say 45 degrees, I can enter a value of theta and for 45 degrees and get a rotated boundary. In addition, I have the ability to specify how thick this boundary is. And right now it's set at one foot. The material, I can't change at this spot because the material is defined for the entire project. So in order to do that, I need to unselect everything and then look in the project manager. And notice under the modify tab, I have a material option here where I can select the concrete strength. In this case, it's 4,000 PSI. I could change that to 5,000 if I wanted and say, okay. And now all boundaries in my model will be of that material property. So that's how we deal with a predefined shape. One other comment I want to make here is you'll notice that there are these black rectangles drawn midway between the vertices on the sides. These are what are called snap points. And snap points are points where I can start drawing from if I want to draw a user-defined boundary. The number of snap points is controlled over here in the filter tab of the model and load view. And if we look at the boundary details, right now the snap points is set at one. If I change that number to two, now you'll see we're getting two along each boundary. So those are the snap points. In addition to these three predefined types, circles, rectangles, and polygons, I have the ability to draw an arbitrary type shape. And if I select that in the ribbon, now I can drag my mouse to start at a vertice, for example, and then click on grid line points as well as snap points. And in order to close this shape off, I just click on the one I started and I end up with now what's called a user drawn boundary. Now a user drawn boundary behaves a little bit differently than these predefined shapes in that its vertices, the green circles, move independently. And so if I drag them, say grid line seven here, if I move it, notice I'm stretching the whole shape. So that's a different behavior for the user drawn type. In addition, if I click on a vertice, as I've done here, I can go over to the inspector and change its coordinates. Right now, Y is 7.5. Let's drop that to seven. And you see we've brought that particular shape down to uh, a different location. One thing that can be difficult is in seeing the two different shapes as they're shown here. And a way to improve on that is to look in the filter tab and go to the boundary details and select shrink. And when I do that, I'm shrinking these shapes away from their vertices and it makes it much easier to see that I have separated values. One final thing I wanna talk about regarding vertices is to note that, for example, if I click on this vertice and press the delete key, I can remove it and it changes the number of sides. 
If I do that for a predefined shape, it's going to delete the entire shape. So again, predefined shapes are behaving differently than these user drawn shapes. I'm going to go up to the undo and put my area back in. I'm also going to turn off the filters and turn off the shrink filter so that they're touching. The final thing I want to show is let's suppose we want to have either a thickened or a hole in an existing shape. I can do that by, let's say, make it circular. I'll draw a circular boundary or hole. And now if I drag my mouse, you see we're expanding a circle. And when I let up, I get a circle shape drawn at that spot, which I can select. And when I do select it, I have an option to make it a hole. Right now, it's not a hole. If I check that to say, yes, it is a hole, now I put a hole in one of my areas. So that's a way I can create a hole shape. Another thing I can do with an area that's inside an area is to not make it a hole and make it what's called an embedded boundary. Now this embedded boundary can be thicker. Let's suppose I want this shape to be two inches or two feet thick rather than one foot thick. And now I have a section that's a, that is thicker than the outside section. And if I rotate my model around a little bit, we're seeing that we do have that thickened section there. So that's a way to thicken a section. We have an overlying area here, and the behavior of that overlying area is actually controlled by a project setting. If with nothing selected, I look at the modify command, I have an option under analysis called overlap handling. Right now, overlap handling is to add thicknesses. If you remember, this embed was two feet thick. This was one foot thick, so the total thickness of the embed is two plus one or three feet. I can change that property from add thicknesses to use the smallest thickness, which was the one foot thick plate, or I can use the largest thickness, which is the two foot thick plate. So that's a way to control embedments and how the overlapping areas are handled.